What up, everybody? So, yeah, I titled this The Earth is Still Flat. So, I know I don't make a ton of videos about this subject anymore. Um, I do still occasionally accept invite to debate. But let me share this to some groups. Dang, I didn't mean to share it there. So yeah, I um, I posted an invite on Flat Earth and Globe Discussion and invited people to come to 24-7 Flat Earth Discord to debate their Jesuit space monkey religion. But of course, no one's going to show up because Globers are just keyboard warriors. What's up, bro? Hopefully the... Um, the audio is pretty good and all that. But I just wanted to cover some stuff. What up, Brian? Brian Stavely's a legend. Go check him out on YouTube and sub. Don't be lame. And he's got three channels. Um, I just wanted to cover the basics real quick about why it's provable that the earth is flat. Because it's been a while. Um, so yeah, we were all indoctrinated and told that we live on this tiny speck of dust in this ever-expanding universe. So I'm going to break this down for some Globers, and hopefully they grasp the magnitude of what I'm saying. So it's commonly known and accepted, an intellectual forum, that when you make a positive claim, you have what's called the burden of proof. You have to substantiate your claim with evidence. The Globe Earth is a positive claim. Not only that, but it's a positive claim of specificity, okay? It claims axial rotation of 1,040 miles per hour east of the equator. It claims a circumference around the equator of 24,901 miles. It claims a radius of 3,959 miles. So that's a positive claim of specificity, okay? It claims orbital trajectory, that we're in the fabric of space-time. It claims a lot of things. And so, being that specific positive claim has a very specific burden of proof. The issue arises when you go seek out the proof for this positive claim. So to clarify or to preemptively, um, you know, discuss commonly used fallacious arguments from Globe Earthers, the Globe Earth has the burden of proof. If you start trying to poke holes in some flat earth model, that is called a shifting the burden of proof fallacy. In addition, uh, flat earth doesn't actually claim a definitive model. We don't have all the information required to make a model. Okay, So that's a shifting the burden of proof fallacy and a straw man fallacy. Because no model that you try to poke holes in can actually be a genuine flat earther's position because we don't claim a definitive model because we don't have access to all the information required. Another common fallacy that globe earthers use is a reification fallacy. So what they do is they postulate things that they consider evidence that require the presupposition that the earth is a ball. They also do this with gravity. They reify gravity. So that's a reification fallacy. Those are the three major ones if you ever try to debate a globe earther that they're going to pull out. The shifting the burden of proof fallacy, a straw man fallacy, and a reification fallacy. What's up, Karen? Karen B is a legend. Go sub to Karen B on YouTube. So here's the deal. Axial rotation has never been substantiated. They tell us that we're spinning around 1,040 miles per hour east, but it's never been substantiated. Globe earth is up Foucault's pendulum. It doesn't have an independent frame of reference. It isn't consistent. It has a window of error and it doesn't correlate cause and effect. Science is the correlation of cause and effect. So what that means is you have an observable phenomena that is the effect. Okay, you have to correlate the cause to the effect, which means you have to have an independent variable that is manipulated so that it differentiates the effect and then you can validate that that is the cause, okay? That's what the actual scientific method is. Yeah, you have the dependent variable, the effect, the observable phenomena. You have an independent variable that you manipulate to validate the effects, okay? To validate that it is the cause of the effect. 
It's very simple. The globe Earth doesn't do this ever at all, so there's literally not one single piece of scientific evidence for the globe Earth. So very simply, Foucault's pendulum doesn't prove axial rotation because, again, it doesn't have an independent frame of reference, an inertial frame of reference. It's still connected to the Earth. It doesn't have an independent frame of reference. And it has a window of error. It isn't consistent. And it doesn't correlate the cause and the effect. So it is not in any way valid postulation for evidence of the globe Earth spinning. Okay, they'll bring up a gyroscope incredibly inconsistent you do not get 15 degrees of precession every time that you make a reading with a gyroscope and again you can't just cherry pick when it does work for one and again we have the same problem it doesn't correlate the cause to the effect imposed causalities claimed causalities are just that they're claims you have to validate them Okay, so we were all indoctrinated and told that we lived on this tiny spe speck of dust that's spinning and shooting through space in this ever-expanding universe. And it was brought to you by Jesuits, the Vatican Church, literally. Okay, and also a Jesuit priest came up with the Big Bang Theory. So, one of the most corrupt establishments ever, if not the most corrupt establishment ever, brought you this fairy tale story that you evolved from apes and that you're on a tiny speck of dust and there has no evidence. So we've established axial rotation literally has no evidence. And Globe Earth will bring up Foucault's pendulum, which is from 1851, and then like 70 years later, in 1922, Einstein said, I've come to the conclusion that, you know, the movement of Earth will never be detected or can never be detected with observable phenomena or optical phenomena. So it's pretty crazy. Like one of the, the little leaders of their religion that they prop up the incestuous grabbler known as Albert Einstein himself knew Foucault's pendulum wasn't a sufficient postulation to substantiate axial rotation. So it's a clown world whenever the Globers just regurgitate that because they heard somebody like Mooktoon or Quite the Tight Shirt say it and they don't know what they're talking about. They just regurgitate things. Okay, so there's tons of evidence. Traditional Glober, no specificity. Feel free to provide some actual evidence. And maybe you should listen. Okay, so axial rotation has never been substantiated, literally. It makes a claim of curvature. Inherently, if it's a ball, it's going to curve, right? So what we did was we went out and test the claim of curvature. We have long-distance observations that are literal impossibilities on the globe Earth. We have observations of 273 miles. The black swan was done from one foot observer height. The geometric horizon should be at 1.2 feet. In the circulation of the mean, we gave you five feet. That means it's the geometric horizon, the physical, literal, tangible piece of land that should cause obstruction of view. It can be no further than 2.73 miles. This isn't a debatable number, okay? This is necessitated by the geometry of the Earth that they told you that you live on because you take the radius times 1.225 of the observer height and you get the geometric horizon. We tested it. We saw that the horizon was beyond the oil rig that was at 9.42 miles and it couldn't be any farther than 2.73 miles, a literal impossibility on the globe Earth. And again, we have long distance observations everywhere, all the time, 50 miles, 60 miles, 200 miles, missing a mile of curvature, a mile of curvature. We have observations where there should be a mile of the Earth blocking our view and there's no curvature there. Really take that in. Okay. And of course, uh, Globers have been indoctrinated and trained to just regurgitate the word refraction. Void of specificity. There's five effects of refraction. They don't even know that. They don't actually even invoke a specific one that's relative to the postulation. They also don't seem to understand the concepts that looming, for example, is a, a phenomena relative to the horizon. Objects loom relative to the horizon. We're discussing the movement of the horizon. They don't understand the idea of empirical means verification, experimentation, replication to actually verify their postulations. It's a clown world. Okay, it's pathetic. It is so pathetic, honestly. Like, it's so easy to wipe the floor with the Globers in a debate, so I'm explaining. And also, just for a little context, you're not a Glober just because you think the Earth's a globe. You're a Glober if you're, you know, given all this information and you double down in the face of it out of ignorance. You know, willful ignorance, cogn cognitive dissonance, confirmation bias, that makes you a Glober. Okay, like a lot of the people that are going to jump in here from the Flat Earth and Globe discussion are Globers. Okay, y'all are, are pathetic. I'm just going to be real with you. Okay, so we were all indoctrinated. It's all good. So, very simply, 
We have too much evidence that has falsified the claim of the radius and the curvature that's necessitated of the claim of radius and circumference. It's a necessitation of the globe Earth claim. It isn't negotiable. We have a long distance laser test of 25 miles, 30 miles, you know, from 1.5 meters off the ground. The literal impossibility if the Earth was a globe, okay? And so not only, we make one claim that is a claim to a general descriptor of the surface of the Earth that is flat. We have the burden of proof to substantiate it's flat. Well, we have done that. I just now gave you numerous examples, and there's thousands of them. We've substantiated the claim of flat. That's all we have to substantiate. We don't claim a definitive model. We're not even allowed to traverse the whole Earth. I'm not sure if you're aware. So how could we possibly know a definitive model? That's non sequitur to the fact that we have falsified your model. The falsification of the positive claim of the globe Earth doesn't just go away because you want to poke holes in a straw man model. Okay, I really hope that people are listening to what I'm saying if you're a Glober because it's so incredibly simple if you really just understand what I'm saying. Okay, so again, um, you don't get to shift the burden of proof. That's a fallacy. So it's, it's that simple. It made a claim of curvature. We falsified that claim. If it's not curved, what is it? It's flat. Very simple stuff. And uh, the KJV Bible was scientific. Yeah, true that. There are people that claim to be Christians, but the Bible literally says that the earth is flat, and they act like it doesn't. I don't know. It's really weird. It's really kind of weird. But nevertheless. Um, so, yeah, you can't shift the burden of proof. Really take that in. It's simple. We falsified the positive claim of the globe earth. And understand the implications of the falsification of the radius. The current connotation of gravity relies heavily on that number. That means gravity implodes. Orbital trajectory implodes. Everything about the globe Earth model, the heliocentric model, relies on the radius of 3959, as does the 24-hour day and night cycle, the seasons, a mile. Everything relies on that radius. So we have completely falsified the entirety of the model once we falsify the radius, which we have literally done. Go look at the black swan. Okay, now to touch on something that Globers love to say is gravity. Let me give you an example of when, when you know, Globers will invoke their little deified force known as gravity. The necessary antecedent to gas pressure is a physical container. We have a pressurized system on Earth with gas pressure in it, okay? Now, according to the second law of thermodynamics, um, it's about entropy, right? Energy transfer, heat to cold in layman terms. So high pressure will naturally seek equilibrium and migrate to low pressure systems. So they say that we have a pressurized system here on Earth and it's adjacent to a near perfect vacuum of 10 to the negative 17 torr. So how do we have gas pressure here without the necessary antecedent of physical containment all observation shows us that always. If you let gas out of something, it's going to immediately seek equilibrium and it's going to disperse in all directions, okay? So you have a big issue there with your model. It's, it's violating the second law of thermodynamics. And this is where um, Globers will just parrot the word gravity. So most of them don't even know this, but you have to understand what gravity it is that you're discussing, okay? So what is your connotation of gravity? So I guess you'll say, well, they don't even know, but I'll just explain it to you, okay? So originally, there was Newtonian gravity, proportionate mass, mutual mass acceleration. And in fact, Newton himself didn't even postulate an explanation. And in fact, what he did say was to think that this would work on brute matter in the vacuum of space over vast distances is to me so great an absurdity that no man with competent faculty of thinking and philosophical matters would ever fall into it. So basically, Newton himself said the way that you use gravity is retarded. And yet, he died, and then people postulated an explanation for him, and then attributed the idea to him, and he literally said, no one with competent faculties of thinking and philosophical matters could ever fall into it. That was superseded by... Einsteinian gravity in 1915, the idea that gravity is the effect of warped space-time. Okay, space, a conceptual abstraction, and time, a conceptual abstraction. Time is a human construct we use to quantify existence. It's a measurement of magnitude between two points. It's a measurement of passing. It's purely a conceptual abstraction we use to quantify existence. It's nothing in and of itself. 
It is a concept. Space is also a concept. It's a conceptual abstraction used to represent a privation. A privation is the absence of anything, right? So the absence of anything, i.e. nothing, nothingness is an example of a privation. A shadow is an example of a privation. It can have attributes. It's cooler when you stand in a shadow, but it cannot have properties because it's nothing in and of itself. A privation is nothing in and of itself. A shadow is just absence of light, okay? So it is nothing in and of itself. It's just absence of light can have attributes, not properties. Space is a privation, the absence of anything that cannot have physical properties. The theory of relativity attempts to attribute physicality, physical properties, to a privation, conceptual abstractions, okay? That's called a reification fallacy. So on its face, the theory of relativity isn't even a feasible postulation, even in theoretical possibility, because it's a reification fallacy, literally. Okay, so Albert Einstein reified space, a privation, and gave it physical properties. So the very conceptual backing of gravity isn't even sufficient. Not to mention that the little incestuous grabbler that he was, he took the equations, the mathematical representation of gravity, from Lorentz. The Lorentz equations, Lorentz transformations, which had an electromagnetic conceptual backing, and then he changed the conceptual backing, but he just took the math, and he also took it from Poincaré. He didn't even come up with anything. He's a complete and total loser. He dropped out of school. In fact, he didn't even get accepted into school because he couldn't pass the basic competency test when it comes to mathematics. So it's a clown world that dude was an idiot and he married his first cousin and then wrote about how he wanted to hook up with her daughter. And he's revered, but we weren't hard told about Nikola Tesla, one of the brightest minds ever. So there you go. There's the ordeal with gravity. The, literally, there's not even a theoretical postulation as to what gravity is to explain it that makes any sense because the only one that's currently used, the current scientific rhetoric, is a reification fallacy. In addition to that, it's just never been proven or substantiated. Okay, so this right here. That was downward acceleration, okay? So things fall to the ground. That's an effect. Take this in, Glovers. Downward acceleration is an effect, okay? We have an agreed upon average of 9.8 meters per second squared, a general rate of acceleration to the earth when unimpeded, okay? That's 9.8 meters per second squared. It's just an average, it's a generality, an agreed upon average of the phenomena, an observable phenomena, i.e. an effect of local downward acceleration. That's all 9.8 meters per second squared is, little g, okay? So gravity claims to be the cause of that effect. So when people say, you want me to prove gravity, and they do this, that's just, I'm sorry, that's just retarded. That's not how it works at all, okay? That is an effect, local downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, a magical representation, a mathematical description of the effect gravity claims to be the cause. And scientific means, empirical evidence has to correlate the cause and the effect. That's what science is, that's what the scientific method is. Never in the history of mankind has that cause ever been substantiated. So I really want you to take that in, that I'm not just saying that Glovers will say something about, you know, um, Cavendish, okay, where they had a couple, you know, lead balls and they said that it was gravity that affected them, even though he was attempting to, like, determine the weight of the earth, which shows you where that guy's head was, but, uh, simply, it has a window of error, it isn't consistent, and it also, once again, doesn't correlate cause to effect, it doesn't take into account electrostatics, anything with matter inherently is electrostatic, electrostatics is well known to be a much stronger force than gravity is even postulated to be, so how could you adequately differentiate between electrostatics and gravity? It's, it's pretty, pretty dumb, okay, so... Cavendish obviously doesn't prove gravity. So again, just to pair or just to summarize for you, there isn't even a feasible theoretical possibility in the form of a con conceptual backing for what gravity could be. And in addition, it's literally never been proven. Literally. Okay, so relative density is a sufficient answer of the explanation or of the observable phenomena of downward acceleration. It's that simple. Volume over mass relative to the medium it's encompassed in will cause directionality. That's why helium goes up because it weighs less than air. Okay, so to give you a rudimentary example, if you take a beach ball and you throw it up in the air, it's going to fall to the ground. If you take that same beach ball and go swim to the bottom of a pool and then you drop it, let go of it, it's going to float up. The only thing that has changed is the medium. Okay, so the Observable phenomena of the directionality of the object was altered by the medium, okay? So we have manipulated the medium. 
So it's that simple. This dude says, yo, density isn't a force, LMFAO. Yeah, that's operating out of the presupposition that something falling requires a force. I don't think you're really keeping up here, obviously. Okay, so again, we actually take an empirical approach, which means verifiable through scientific means. We can manipulate the medium and shows that it changed directionality. You can never correlate cause and effect whenever you claim that there is a downward force of gravity causing things to fall. And in fact, this guy doesn't even understand his own religion because this current scientific rhetoric is that gravity isn't a force. It's that it's the effect of warped space-time. Okay, so I'm glad that you don't even know your own religion, but you're trying to teach people in here. So, yeah, it's very simple. Gravity, in the current scientific rhetoric, isn't even a force. It's the effect of warped space-time that acts as a force, okay? So it's very simple. People try to proclaim the axiomatic interpretation that there has to be a force that isn't true, right? Directionality is created. Why do things fall once you drop them? Because you dropped it. It is actually that simple, yeah. And whenever you manipulate the medium, then it differentiates the effect. So gravity is complete nonsense, and, and Glovers constantly reify it, void of any specificity or substantive speci or postulation of verifiability, empirical means, what science actually is. Not pseudoscience, just making things up and then reifying your postulation and then acting like that answers the question. So what you'll run into, again, is shifting the burden of proof fallacies, straw man fallacies, reification fallacies. And that's all you're ever going to run into because that's all Glovers know how to do. And begging the question fallacy, of course. For example, I had a debate with Toon. I was like, can you give me an example of gas pressure existing without a container? He showed footage of like someone going up in the air and he said, look, there's pressure there, but it's getting really low. He said, look, the pressure is really, really low. I said, the what? The pressure. Okay. And I said, so what does that prove? He's like, well, look right here. It is. There's a gas pressure without a container. And I said, no, you're begging the question of the nature of the earth that there isn't a physical container above that. So begging the question fallacies and reification fallacies are the two go-to's outside of what like for example the clown known as professor dave does which he constantly shifts the burden of proof to a straw man model a straw man fallacy so it's just very low iq attempts to try to cling on to a religion and it's called a religion because that's an accurate connotation because it's a belief system void of any evidence and it has the doctrine of men as the foundation so it's very simple, like we chose to go verify it. We were all indoctrinated, we all once thought this. Trust me, when I first heard the earth was flat, I thought it was crazy. But for five years, I've gone and independently tried to verify that. We've gone out and tested the earth itself, which is the very question at hand here. What is the surface of the earth? Is it curved or is it not? We went and tested it. None of you globe earthers have tested it, but you know you know more about it than us somehow. It's, it's baffling, okay? So... We were all indoctrinated, I understand it's a lot to take in to, to even, you know, try to entertain the magnitude of this, this lie, but it is just what it is. And as an intellectually responsible adult, you do not turn your head to evidence or what the truth is because it makes you uncomfortable or because you can't understand the motive. You establish that they lied, then you can try to speculate as to what the motive is, but lack of interpretation of what the motive is does not change the fact that they did indeed lie. So we should just all be adults here and maybe, you know, try to adopt an empirical approach about the nature of where we live. Um, there are massive implications of this. So one of the uh, defense mechanisms that Glovers go into once ever their religion gets dismantled as it is casually being dismantled right now, they'll try to say, what's it even matter? Well, of course it matters. They told you we're a tiny speck of dust in this ever-expanding universe, and the truth is it's a geocentric stationary plane, meaning the center of everything in the sky revolves over top of you. The sky revolves over top of you, and the stars do a revolution that resets annually, and that has happened for ever all recordable history literally the sky always resets every single year yet they tell you that we're going 1040 mile per hour rotation while shooting 66,600 miles per hour through the universe around the sun shooting 500,000 mile per hour through the universe i mean that is just wild that that makes no sense hey austin what are you doing tomorrow night brian i would love to have you on round if you're free yeah for sure i'm down i am free um, I'm also mentally free. I'm trying to I'm trying to mentally free up some of these Glovers, but I have a feeling that they're not going to listen. But uh, yeah, so we pretty much covered it, you know. So in summary, guys, in a paraphrase or yeah, summarization, 
The globe earth is a positive claim of specificity, thus it carries the burden of proof of axial rotation and the metrics and orbital trajectory and the very glue of the entire model, which is gravity, okay? None of those things have ever been substantiated. Whenever you are taking a scientific approach to something, you have to correlate the cause and effect through empirical means. Empirical means verifiable, okay? So we need some verifiability and some substantive uh, postulations of evidence here. We don't just live in la-la land where authoritative figures have crafted this theory for you and shoved it down your throat from the age of like five. And by the way, when you were five years old, you didn't think it made sense either. They were like, hey, this is what you live on. And five-year-old you was like, what are you talking about, crazy person? We would fall off the bottom. And she's like, no, silly, gravity. And you're like, what's that? A force that pulls you to the ground, but Proportionate mass and mutual mass acceleration has never been established in any way with empirical means. Literally, it's never been proven and it in fact was superseded in 1915 with a new conceptual backing of the theory of relativity. And your teacher didn't even know that or understand the difference or the implications of the change. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, there's literally no proof. And then Globers will go as far as to tell you that boats are obstructed from the bottom up because of the physical curvature of the Earth. But we have literally disproven that. And any of the top people that argue and debate the globe Earth, they have now detached themselves from the physicality of the geometric horizon being visible. They've I've debated a dude named Kosho. He's gone as far as to say, the geometric horizon is a physical location that we don't expect to see. So for five years now, I've been looking into the Earth and for for five years I've heard globe earthers say that boats disappear because of the curve of the earth and now they're all acting like they haven't said that for five years and they're admitting that it doesn't. And that is simply because the horizon is an optical phenomenon. It's nothing more than an illusion. It's where the sky appears to meet the ground. It fluctuates based on observer height and atmospheric conditions. There is nothing physical about it whatsoever and we've disproven and falsified the necessitation of a geometric horizon based on the claim of a radius. So there you go. Yeah, guys, you don't live on a magic spinning ball. It's just preposterous. Uh, you didn't evolve from apes. It's equally as preposterous. And I think evolution will probably go down in history as one of the dumbest postulations ever, right next to this fantasy depiction of where you live. So, you know, maybe you should swallow your pride and re-examine your worldview as, as opposed to having it crafted by people that have something to gain by lying to you. You're not allowed to go within 500 miles in each direction of the North Pole, and you're not allowed to privately traverse the South Pole, the South Pole, also known as Antarctica, which we don't fully know the true characteristics of, because we can't go there. We cannot freely, privately explore Antarctica. You're not allowed to go and bring external fuel supply or water or mechanic equipment. You're subject to being monitored. You can only go on an approved guided tour, and you can be stopped by force if you violate any of those terms and conditions. Even though, of course, they don't own the earth, God does, and God made you with the inherent free right to be able to travel this earth and traverse it however you feel the need. But, of course, they, they think that they somehow have rights over you. So... Um, I find it a bit odd that people run around defending oppression from tyrannical positions whenever they're the ones also being oppressed as if these tyrannical leaders retained you as a defense attorney. It's, it's pretty crazy. Brilliant way of saying that you understand the world at a five-year-old's level. This is all you'll ever get from Globe Earth. There's this very low IQ remarks completely void of any substantive specificity. And, and, and it's sad, but that's all you'll ever get. So, And, and I, I just explained this pretty pretty rudimentary right like the globe earth has a positive claim has the burden of proof axial rotation the metrics of the size orbital trajectory etc none of it's ever been substantiated and just to top all of this off we we observe that the sun and the moon are the same size in the sky they try to tell you this is just a coincidence and that the moon is actually 400 times smaller than the sun and coincidentally exactly 400 times closer and that's why it looks like they're the same size in the sky in addition, we only see one side of the moon ever for always in the entirety of the history of mankind. And they tell you this is also just a coincidence because of tidal locking and it has a perfect rotational speed to where we only see one half of it. Okay. And yeah, 66,600 miles per hour on a 66.6 .6 degree tilt with 0.666 degree curvature. Oh yeah, that's probably a coincidence. Okay, so... Clearly, this was a lie crafted to detach you from the truth. And what the implications of that, you know, is speculative and then thus subjective. But uh, it's very simple. 
why are you using God to prove a flat earth? I literally haven't used God to prove a flat earth at all. Once again, a perfect example of the very low IQ responses you get from globe earthers that are in full panic mode as I casually dismantle their religion, okay? Flat earth proves God. I didn't have to use God to prove, to prove flat earth. The Earth proves that. I don't know if you've been listening. I'm assuming you don't have a very like good attention span. Um, you may be lacking in comprehension skills as well. But um, yeah, we went out and tested the claim of curvature. We have 25 mile laser tests, 30 mile laser tests. We have long distance observations of over 200, 300, 400 miles, um, and we've taken observations over 10 miles with the horizon over 10 miles away from one foot off the ground. When the necessitation of the claim of the radius for the geometric horizon could be no further than 1.2 miles, we gave you 5 feet, it'd be 2.73 miles, yet the horizon is beyond 9.4 miles, a literal impossibility on the globe Earth. And there's hundreds and hundreds of observations like that, thousands of long-distance observations that are impossibilities. And the laser test alone was sufficient to prove that the Earth is flat, and axial rotation has never been substantiated, and gravity has never been substantiated, and once you falsify the claim of the radius, the entire model implodes. It's getting reiterative. I'm not going to keep going back and forth with globe earthers that are suffering from cognitive dissonance and cannot offer a remark with any substantive specificity. It's really pretty sad. It's a sad state of affairs that they will leave this live in this conversation actually convincing themselves that somehow I'm stupid and they can't even either understand what I'm saying or they refuse to fully even entertain it and the validity of what it is, okay? But science correlates cause and effects through verifiable means. The globe earth never does this at all, ever, whatsoever. So, glad we got that covered. I just figured I'd do a little brief overview of the discussion, um, you know, and a lot of things, like, globe earthers will constantly point to the sky to try to explain to you how the earth is a ball. So we falsified the claim of curvature because there's a lack of uh, physicality, yet globe earthers will be like, oh, look at the stars, because they're not very bright. That's simply what it comes down to. And some globe earthers are decently smart, but confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance, uh, you know, has no IQ bias, you know, so it's that simple. It's in the Bible, but you can make an intelligent argument about many of the lies you've been fed without referencing the Bible. Once again, um, a very non-specific, vague recollection, trying to critique the way that I'm explaining this information, but not capable of actually offering any substantive rebuttal. So it's pretty pathetic, the state of affairs of these Globers. It's actually quite laughable. Something else you'll find is they'll talk real big behind their keyboard, but they'll never show their face on camera and debate in live time. Amanda Angela, if you want to debate on my YouTube live time, um, you're more than invited to, but we all know that you will not do so because you can't. Um, and yeah, I haven't had to reference the Bible as to why the earth is flat at all. What a loser. What do you want, dude? I've got a degree in a life. Okay, well, obviously you don't have any substantive responses to what's being postulated right now. No one cares about your degree. Look at you bragging about being in debt to be indoctrinated. I'm on your side. I wasn't rebuking it. Okay, well, I didn't even use the Bible one single time, so I don't know what you're talking about. I'm here for a giggle. So funny to watch a guy spout absolute nonsense for half an hour. Think about what that dude just said. This dude has watched me talk on camera, another male, for half an hour. What a clown. He thinks I'm stupid and he's watching me talk on camera for half an hour. What a loser. Textbook gamma. Please don't be that guy. Uh, let's see here. Oh, he has a degree. Yeah, exactly. Look at him paying tens of thousands of dollars for indoctrination slip. Stand challenge him to a debate, I dare you. They won't, dude. And if they do, it's just going to be behind their keyboard. They won't show up. It's not rising. It's getting smaller as it travels away from the point source. Yeah, so due to perspective, you can only see so far. It's called a limit of perspective. If you stay at the end of a long hallway, eventually things will become obstructed. You won't be able to see them anymore. And it'll look like the sky or the roof, the ceiling, and the floor are converging. It's just a similar limit of perspective. Same thing if you stand at the end of a long railroad, right? So our limit of perspective is simply relative to observer height and atmospheric conditions and angular resolution. It's very simple. Come on, man, you gotta know better. You know these Clovers aren't actually gonna debate me, bro. 
Like the people that they revere as like globe earth heroes, I've already dismantled them in debate, right? Like I debated McToon and dismantled him and he claimed he won and the Globers doubled down and claimed that they won. So what a joke. Mind if I debate you, I've always wanted to do it. No, of course I don't mind because Globe Earth is so laughable I could debate it in my sleep. So Emily Sacru, well, Sercu, we'll see if you're actually about it, but we all know that you're not. But you can send me a personal message if you actually want to debate. The stipulations are simply that you debate live time on my YouTube channel and you have to show your face. Yeah. Okay, so I think we've pretty sufficiently uh, dismantled the Jesuit space monkey religion casually. Their heroes are in reality morons. Yes, exactly, Brian. They are literally morons. To give, to really put into perspective how much of morons they are, uh, McToon. When I debated him, I said, "Okay, you have the you have the burden of proof, McToon. Can you substantiate curvature?" He showed me a picture of the horizon. And then in the same debate, he said that we never see the geometric horizon. That is the level of stupid that we're dealing with. Okay, and then Globe Earthers will watch it and say that he won the debate because because they're suffering from confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance in Dunning Kruger. Like, what can you what can you do? Anyone that actually does their own research can't debate the world being round. It's over. Yeah, well, anyone that actually does own research can't debate the fact that it's provably flat. Please talk about how Venus is visible at midnight now. It's a globe and possibility. Yeah, sure, there's all kinds of globe and possibilities. I like to stick to the terrain, though, because that's Glover's favorite move is to point at the sky. Um, yeah, but the selenillion eclipse is impossible on the globe Earth. A refraction! Simple question. What do the governments of the world got to gain from telling the world the Earth is round? Uh, I, see, I've already covered that. I don't know how long you've been here, Barry. But, you know, what adults do is they establish what the truth is, and then they go from there. They do not turn their head to the truth until they feel they can adequately explain the motivation for someone lying to you about what the truth actually is. So we have established through empirical means that there is literally no curvature anywhere. We falsify the radius, which means it isn't a ball, and that it's flat. If you want to speculate why... Well, what would they gain? What if there's more land? Well, they'd gain the advantage of having the land and the resources. They've also convinced you that you're a tiny speck of dust in an ever-expanding universe where everything came from nothing and you evolved from a rock and then an ape, thus creating the path to adopt a worldview of materialism and nihilism and makes your mind much more malleable and controllable. We give like 54 million, now like 59, 60 million dollars a day to NASA and that's just the space agency of America. So billions and billions of dollars, potentially land and resources and a much more malleable state of mind for the population they attempt to control. In addition, it's very simple. Knowledge is power. It's much more powerful whenever you're the only one with it. Question answered. they take away God then man will worship them yeah, I guess if you're stupid I saw that debate he used charts with squiggly lines trying to prove his point yeah dude he's pathetic but what what's even more pathetic than how McToon fared in that debate were the Globers that doubled down and said that he won so all right guys uh yeah I'm gonna get out of here I just wanted to kind of concisely uh, sent you a DM. We're going to see, again, the only the only stipulations is you have to show your face live on YouTube and you can be on my channel. I'll add you into my stream yards and we can debate. Uh, bro, you haven't had enough time to sit here and run your mouth. You have time to debate them. They're not going to debate me, dude. They're all talk behind their keyboards. We've discussed this. Join the Flat Earth Discord. Looks like fun. Waiting to get verified. Cool, I'll probably jump on in a little bit and I can get you verified or you can just send someone a message and jump in VC check-in. 24-7 Flat Earth Discord for any of you Clovers that think that you can actually debate reality. Jump in there, they'll thoroughly dismantle your religion too, I'm sure. Do you research QAnon stuff? No, QAnon is a psyop to keep you complicit. It might, they may, may even make it look somewhat real so they can usher in bigger moves, but that's kind of non sequitur to the discussion. Thank you, Austin. We will we will get it with you. Sweet, sweet. See you tomorrow night, bro. Yeah, for sure. Much love, man. Simple spirit te level test. 
Yeah, the uh, amount of evidence for the, the flat earth is literally endless. It's a plethora, and uh, there's no evidence for the globe earth. So, all right, I'm going to get out of here, though. Nice, nice uh, chopping it up with you guys. Very simply, again, uh, we falsify the claim of the globe earth. You don't live on a tiny speck of dust in the ever-expanding universe. You are actually very important because inherently you have domain over the earth, and the earth is inherently important because it's the center of everything. So a geocentric stationary plane where everything revolves over top of you and the sky, res the, you know, the sky resets annually for all of recordable history. You're very important. They didn't want you to know that because you're in a much more malleable state of mind when you adopt a worldview of materialism and apathy and nihilism. So, you know, just seek and speak truth and accept it for what it is. Don't try to fit truth into the parameters of your comfort, right? So whenever you try to confine truth to what makes you comfortable, well, that's just stupid, right? So you just accept truth for what it is and you go from there. Um, so look into it if you actually pride yourself in, in being a truth seeker, if you want to know the truth. Uh, and you're going to have to examine evidence without bias, and it's actually a pretty simple conclusion to come to. All the empirical evidence validates that the Earth is in a D flat and consistently falsifies the claim of the globe Earth that you were taught and indoctrinated with. So open up your mind, go look into it. Uh, anybody that sees this video that wants to debate me and understands the rules are very simple. You have to agree to jump on my YouTube channel in live time and show your face, and I'll be happy to debate them because that'll weed out about 99% of the keyboard warriors. So, all right, guys. Much love. Uh, you know, I'll catch up with y'all later or something. I guess I'll, I'll uh, catch up with Brian and Karen and Yana. So tune in. And uh, yeah, just like I said, seek and speak truth no matter what. I'll catch up with y'all. Peace.